Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It's good to see you all on this Lord's Day. Of course, it's uh, every preacher's dream to have a full sanctuary, so <laughs> wonderful to see everybody today. We extend a special welcome to all those uh, from Annapolis Area Christian School choirs who are with us, and we look forward to enjoying uh, your offering of music for us today. I'm sure it'll help all of us worship. Uh, a few announcements to make before we begin our service. Uh, it's also a special day because uh, Jake Treadway is going to be baptized. And he and his family are here with us this morning. So I ask you to remember Jake and those who love him in your prayers as we celebrate his profession of faith and his commitment to Jesus Christ. Unbinding your soul groups have begun. Uh, the first group met on Wednesday. And then the Sunday group will meet, of course, tonight at 6.30. We may have sent information out to you that said 7 o'clock, but that's not true. Actually, our meeting today will be uh, at 6.30 in the Armitage Fellowship Hall. So uh, if, you're, if you signed up to be part of that group, we look forward to seeing you uh, this evening. This coming Saturday, the MS Walk in Greenville and Greene County will take place. And as is our tradition, we will be supporting that. Uh, we have uh, a table set up downstairs if you'd like to make a donation uh, before you leave today. Or if you'd like to be a member of the team that walks, uh, you can um, leave your name there and uh, Holden Miller We'll be getting in touch with you about the details of when that walk begins. Next Sunday is Seminary Sunday when we celebrate the ministry of Memphis Theological Seminary, uh, the uh, Cumberland Presbyterian Church's only seminary. Uh, a lot of us have heard of Bethel University. More of us have gone to Bethel University than the seminary, but the seminary is key in forming uh, ministers uh, for our denomination and for many other denominations. So I hope you'll be here next Sunday and consider making a special gift to them. You'll have an envelope in your order uh, for doing so. Uh, so please remember that next Sunday, Seminary Sunday. For those of you who are our guests, we know that you come from many traditions. Uh, the Cumberland Presbyterian Church is a Presbyterian denomination. Uh, it's not the Presbyterian Church in America, though, or the PCUSA. It's its, its own church, uh, and we are a relatively small group located mostly in the south. Uh, but we've been around since about 1810. So uh, when you go back to Maryland and somebody says, have you ever heard of Cumberland Presbyterians? You can say yes. I actually worship there one Sunday. And we're, we're glad that you're a part of our heritage today. God has promised to be with us. As we gather for worship, let us prepare to meet God.
Let us stand for our call to worship. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. God's marvelous works among the peoples. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Since Christ has welcomed us, we welcome one another in His name. The peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. This morning we're going to be talking about, <coughs> excuse me, this morning we're going to be talking about, let me try this one more time. This morning we're going to be talking about, you know our voice is a funny thing. We take it for granted so many times. 
I never really think about my voice. It's just kind of like the air that I breathe. It's just there. When I open my mouth and I want to say something, it's just there. It comes out. But our voice is a gift from God. And most gifts that we get from God, we return thanks. We thank God for those gifts. And we praise God. Can you guys think of ways that we could use our voice to praise God? Can you think of any ideas of how we might use our voice to praise God? Did you hear that beautiful sound this choir was singing with their voices? Was that the most beautiful sound you've ever heard? That was a great way to praise God with your voice. Another way is by speaking. And we're about to hear Jake. He's going to say some things that praises God. He's going to answer questions and say, yes, I believe that Jesus is who he says he was. And so we're going to sit right here. We're going to pray, and then we're going to watch. Jake is going to be baptized. But let's thank God for our voices first. So let's hold hands. You repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for my voice. Help me to use my voice to praise you. And if one day my voice goes away, help me to praise you anyway. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stay right here.
promise to love Jacob as Christ has loved you too. We do. He promises to provide opportunities for him to worship, study, have fellowship, and service. Do you?
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we ask that we hear your word. Help us to attend and to listen. And as we listen, would you, O oh God, open our hearts that we might understand you and your will for us through your written word. In Jesus' name, amen. The reading today is from Psalm number 95, verses 1 to 7. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and may, let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his. He made it the dry land which his hands also have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is God and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his land. Oh, that you would listen to his voice. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As most of the regulars here know and the visitors are about to find out, I have a 15-month-old grandson with some serious seizure troubles. He's doing great right now, carried along by good medicine, the prayers of these people, and the love of his family. His parents have him enrolled in something called music therapy. Uh, this past Monday, he was the only one in class, uh, which gave him a chance to showcase his skills. The therapist pulled out a guitar and a drum. I'll play the guitar, she said to Everett, 
you play the drum. She strummed the guitar twice. Uh, He beat the drum twice. She strummed three times. Everett gave back three beats to her. You are way too young to be doing that, she said. I'm not bragging, of course. (laughs) Okay, maybe I'm bragging a little bit. But I want you to notice the coming together of two words we usually keep apart, therapy and music, and the wonder-working power that comes forth from the collision. You take a few notes, throw in a desire to heal, and bang, music therapy. You know, that's not a bad name for the church. Music therapy, healing through music. How many times have we come to the sanctuary beat up by life's struggles, only to have a hymn take our wounds and bandage and clean them? Or how about when you come to worship tired and half bored, uh, then the choir blasts an anthem that makes us awake and aware of God's goodness. I've been rescued more than once by a highbrow prelude from the organ or by Whitney ripping apart the keys. Somewhere between our eardrums and our hearts, God makes a saving connection, and we are well again, hopeful, relieved. God's therapy through music. So when the psalmist adjures us to make a joyful noise to the Lord, he may have more than one reason in mind. Uh, For sure, the psalmist calls us to praise God because praise is fitting. God is the life-giving creator of the universe. The seas ebb and flow in His hands. The purple morning mountains are His handiwork. Whether singing makes us better or not, it still makes sense at all times and all places to lift our voices in praise to the great and glorious God. Yet the psalmist probably knows what we know. Music also puts us back together. Our thanksgiving and joy may be scattered and lost, but a good hymn will pick up the pieces. Hope may be missing some vital parts, but the right right arrangement of Be Still My Soul will reconstitute the whole. I can read, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But when I sing it, suddenly I am lying down in green pastures and drinking from the quiet waters by. So there are at least two reasons to sing our faith. One, God deserves it. Two, singing makes us well. Therapy from God through music. In fact, God's music has such restorative powers, it's been known to raise the dead. When we lived in Marshall, Texas, the congregation led worship ever so often, every few months, in a local nursing home. And worship in a nursing home is much different than worship uh, in a church like we are gathered here today. Most of the residents of the nursing home have lost eyesight, or they can't hear, or they've lost their voice, or some combination of those three. Often, the song leaders are the only ones who sing when you're worshiping at a a nursing home. And often enough, the residents may stare off somewhere away from the live action that's happening in front of them. One day while we were leading worship in that nursing home, the staff wheeled in a woman who was just like everybody else, except even more so. She was slumped across the table that was attached to her high rolling chair. She appeared to be asleep, almost comatose. The staff tried to tell her something, She didn't make a response. I'll admit the idea passed through my mind. Why are we bringing this woman here? Obviously, she couldn't participate. Then the old piano, the out-of-tune one, began to clink out amazing grace. And when I looked up, the woman who once was slumped over her desk attached to her chair was missing. I don't know where she went. But in her place was a long, tall woman swaying with the music, her thin, ebony arms stretching to the heavens, her eyes wide open looking straight at God. Where did she come from? 
She was good as dead a few moments earlier. But the music found her, you see, and brought her back to life. And in case we may need more than one story to help us believe in music's wonder-working power, remember Mrs. Allen. Mrs. Allen had Alzheimer's. She had worried her whole life she would get it, and her worst dream came true. Her husband was good to bring her to church, though. He kept bringing her even after she couldn't recognize anyone. She couldn't speak. People would greet her, and, and Mrs. Allen would look right past them and would never acknowledge that they had spoken to her. But, but every Sunday, her husband brought her to the sanctuary, probably as much for his good as for hers. Well, one Sunday, when the ushers were bringing forward the offering, I looked to my left, and there was Mrs. Allen standing on her own two feet. Every muscle and nerve in her body was singing the doxology. She couldn't speak now, but she was singing. She never missed a beat. She got all the words right. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Some of the last words she ever spoke. Praise God. I'm baffled that some people downplay the importance of music. Are you kidding me? Uh, most of us aren't won over to God by the rational arguments of the philosophers. Most of us are sung into the faith. God gets to us with sound waves and bass guitars, violins and willing soloists. We remember mother singing a, a hymn, a gospel song while she was doing the dishes or an uncle who whistled Love Divine while he was puttering, puttering around in his flower bed. Worship songs stay with us and when we need them, they come back to us to make us brave or to increase our trust in God or to help us ask forgiveness and release. Make no mistake, we, just, we don't sing just to eat up time before the preaching starts. We sing because we need it. It puts us back together. The church's music is life-giving and powerful. So powerful, St. Augustine was a little scared of it. He knew from his own experience that a psalm attached to notes had a greater impact than just the words by themselves. He talked about a hidden correspondence between faith and music which led him to weep whenever he was singing parts of the scripture as a young convert. But Augustine worried that folks would get so wrapped up in the music that they wouldn't pay attention to the words and they would just fall in love with the music itself because it made them feel good. In short, Augustine didn't want to make music an idol, the next uh, golden calf. I think Augustine might have made a good Presbyterian, you know, wary of anything that might bring pleasure. <laughs> uh, we have to acknowledge that he has a point, but I can think of something almost as bad as being mis misled by music. What if the music died? What would happen to faith then? Where would we get the words to cry out our grief? Who would lift us from the pit of despair? Who would teach our children sound theology and kiss them with the hope of heaven? You remember how Don McLean described the death of music. It was like the three ones he admired the most, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They took the last train for the coast the day the music died. Bye-bye, American Pie, and bye-bye to so much that keeps our faith going and our hearts connected to God. That is, if someone kills the music. How happy I am then to report that there is a song that never ends. Day and night around the throne, they never stop singing, the Scriptures say. Angels and archangels, elders and the redeemed from every tribe and tongue. Mrs. Allen and the African-American woman from the nursing home. A multitude of our old friends and even our strangers. They sing in a now 
that goes on forever. Thanks be to God, there is no day when the music dies. The song goes on and on forever. The name of that song is Redemption. It's a new song. Not new in the sense of the Billboard's Top 40, Here Today and Gone Tomorrow, but so ancient and true it never loses its freshness. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive all power, honor, and glory, and blessing. Praise to our God and to the Lamb who shall reign forever and ever. And the four heavenly creatures shout, Amen. And the elders fall down on their faces. We don't have a score for that song that never ends. My hunch is is it could never be written down. I will tell you what I think. I think all kinds of music are gathered up in the song that never ends. Somehow God, the great conductor, pulls in a nice jazz riff. Commingles it with some Bach and some Memphis blues. Then adds a layer of classic country. Oh, and we're just getting started. Throw in the best of contemporary, Matt Redman giving us 10,000 reasons to praise. A Gregorian chant and chants from tribes in Africa and an old gospel favorite like softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. And we must go on. Even if the music includes some forms at which we turn up our noses. Oh, we may hate bluegrass, but for all we know, God loves it, along with hip-hop and bebop and sock hop and, dare we say it, screaming guitars. (laughs) God is the first and primary musician of the universe. All forms of music come from God. We may misuse those forms just like we misuse the words God gives us. But the one who dispersed all those notes in that great big grand variety will bring all that music back to him, swirling around the throne in layers of praise. And when that music goes back to God, it'll bring us with it, risen from the dead, blessing and glory and power and might Be to our God forever and ever. That's how it was. That's how it is. That's how it shall be. There is a theology that says whenever whenever we gather to praise, the veil between heaven and earth disappears. Our voices get caught up with the voices of the heavenly choir doing their thing. For a few moments, the music takes us to a land where death is no more. Mourning, crying, and pain are no more because we're just a few inches from God. Music transports us to the age where all is well and complete thanks to the work of Christ. Maybe that's why music is our therapy. It lets us taste heaven. Then I say, sing on. Join your voices with the church universal and hail Him who saved you by His grace. Sing when you're planting flowers and sing while you're waiting for the spring to come. Sing when your heart is light and free and sing when the burden is too big for you to bear by yourself. Take the songs of the sanctuary with you and let them be your medicine. And if your hope gets too low and you just can't sing anymore, come back here on Sundays. We'll sing for you until you get your voice back. I know some of us aren't big into singing. We don't sing very loud. We're ashamed even of our voices. We tell everybody what a terrible voice we have and nobody will ever ask us to sing a solo. I understand. You ought to see me dance. (laughs) shameful but I would tell you this this morning God hears better than we sing make a joyful noise the psalmist says giving us permission you don't have to be ashamed 
God can gather up your offering as well as anyone else's in that milky way of praise. So sing on. Sing even in the face of death. Especially in the face of death. David and his family knew that his mother didn't have long to live. She fought hard, but they were coming to the end. The hospice nurses had called. It won't be long, they said. So the family went to be with his mother at her home. They gathered around the bed. What'd you do then? He told me, we sang. They sang all of her favorites. She liked the gospel songs. Now that's the way to go. From one song into the song. From night into day. Oh, the church doesn't sing to avoid death. We sing to face it with hope. Somewhere between our eardrums and our hearts, God makes a saving connection. And we are well again, hopeful, relieved. God's therapy through music. So sing on, friends with the angels and the archangels, people you loved who've died and now gone on to their reward, people you don't even know, sing on. Sing all the way home. be seated. (laughs) 
please remember your fellow members in the body of Christ. Carlos Whaley, who's at the University of Virginia Hospital and will be there for the next several weeks receiving treatment. Odin Babb, who's suffering from chronic health problems. Brumley Green, whose brother Richard died this past week. That funeral is this afternoon. 2 o'clock visitation, 2.30 is the funeral itself at Mount Hebron United Methodist Church. John Ray, who is still grieving the loss of her grandmother. And please also remember Courtney Vaughn, who will be going to Georgia, the nation, not the state, to serve in the Peace Corps. Uh, and we will have a special prayer for Courtney this Wednesday at the meal. Please remember, too, Bo Pillar, young Bo, uh, son of Mark and Deanna Pillar, who is uh, suffering from a serious infection at Laughlin Hospital. With one heart and one voice, let us pray to the Lord. Holy and true God, hear the prayers of your people offered in faith and hope. May your spirit pray in us, interceding with sighs too deep for words. We praise you for choirs, choral groups and bell choirs, secular and religious, college teams and senior groups who lift our spirit with song. Especially we hold before you today the choir with us this morning. Travel home with our new friends and bless them as they bless us. We praise you for all who lead music, choir directors, band directors, instrumentalists and conductors. In their pursuit of excellence, give them the resources and encouragement they need, for they make the world a glad and pleasant place. We also remember before you those who cannot hear your music. Come to them in your son Jesus, who had compassion on those shut out from the world of sound, and build their faith in silent, meaningful ways unknown to the rest of us. Remind all of us of our baptism today as we celebrate Jake's. That act by which you claim us, mark us, wash us, and renew us. May we know ourselves as your children and live in such a way that we reflect your wisdom, goodness, and love. Take us back to the water when we are afraid, guilty, or alone. And confirm that we still belong to you. O oh God, heal this wounded world of ours. Care for the sick. Touch the untouchables with mercy. Hold up the grieving and release those trapped by addictions. We're talking about people we know and love. We're talking about us. Be our help and let us help you help others. O oh God, when these prayers are over, your everlasting arms will be underneath us still. Let us rest in that truth and live by it. Through Jesus Christ, our living Lord.
appreciation of this choir. Today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit abide with you always. Let all God's people say it.